members in our midst. So we can just give a special welcome to those that are outside our bracket. We welcome you in our YQ service today. Okay, so I'm not at all going to be long. I'll just share what God has impressed in my heart. And this is as okay. Um, as it pertains to the theme that we have for this conference. Um, so Udada has said a lot of things. You will excuse my language because I'm mostly used to being in youth quake services. So if I say guys or if I say all right, all right, and you are used to hallelujah, just switch for, for tonight. Um, and and then, 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 Thank you. Then tomorrow we're back to regular programming. We'll say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So Amen. in the morning, um, Father Apostle, I'm not sure if I greeted. Did I greet? Oh, okay. Thank you. So I would like to firstly greet the Apostle Nomama. The General of Asia Nomama. The General of Asia Nomama. The Bishops. Oh, bishop. The Pastors. Abifundisi. The Elders. Abadala. And the whole family of Benning Bush. Amen. Amen. You can imagine I am the same size as this pulpit. <laughs> so it, it can be a bit intimidating to be here. But we trust God. God. Amen. Amen. So I think in the morning, the apostle, just to recap quickly on what he shared with he, us, he mentioned um, what it means to be righteous. And there's a few things that he shared that um, resonated quite well with my heart. Where he was emphasizing that we become a new and a fresh set. And he also mentioned that um, this gospel has been preached by them as our seniors and they've preached it uncompromisingly. And they are at a stage now where they are looking to check where is it falling short. And he also mentioned that we as the young people today are a generation of eloquence. As we may have heard the people that spoke here were big, speaking big words. We are that generation. All right, all right. Okay, okay. He also mentioned that many of our problems as a church today are, are from our bodies or our, this earthly tent, the flesh. And there's a whole lot of other things that were said in the morning. But these are the things I, I feel like they meant something a lot about um. May we turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians 5, the theme scripture of the conference. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I will read from verse 17 to 20. It says, um, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Amen. Mm. And then I'd like us to also go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. This is a fun like, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. It reads as follows on my side. As God's partners... I'm reading. It says, as God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. 
And then another version, I think NLT says, we then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Amen. 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 And I think verse 21 of our theme um, says, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering of our sin. So that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. Amen. So I think the guys can put up the picture we had at first. So basically that picture that they will be putting up is just explaining what has already been said to us in the morning. Which speaks to justification and what Jesus Christ by his dying on the cross for us has done. That Christ's righteousness has been credited to us and our guilt, our shame, and our sin. He took it over, over himself. Amen. Amen. Um, so when I prayed after um, Mom Sam gave me the news, the one thing that stood out for me as I was reading this, and I was also following the life of Paul, and also reflecting on the history of our ministry, I think the apostle also touched on it in the morning where he was saying, we had the picture of the greenhouse and the seedlings and he explained how each seedling is connected to a feeder but sometimes you find that there is a seedling that's not producing fruit and yet the feed is there so the one thing that I believe God has challenged me and is challenging us as the young people are relative to the teachings and the messages and all that has been invested to us and the fruit can we really say we have not taken or received this grace in vain amen amen all right all right Okay, okay. Okay, okay. All right, all right. And as I said, but I was then drawn to the verse that follows our theme. Which is 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1. Where it says that as God part God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. So that for me gave me the picture of that seedling that is in the greenhouse and is exposed to the feeder. But, but it is not being benefited by this environment that it is in. And that is because it, as a seedling, as an individual, is not connected. Amen. Amen. So for me, my main curiosity was drawn towards this term in vain, that how can one receive God's grace, such a precious gift, how can we receive it in vain? Yeah, so I just briefly dis, um, describe or define what in vain may be referring to in this sense. So it says that receiving this gift of justification in vain means you've received by believing, yet you hinder the work of the same gift that you've received. And then it also continues, to, or rather it, we can describe it as saying, you've received this gift to no result. 
To know fruit. To know product. It's futile. It's empty. It's of no value. It's not profitable. It's unproductive. And it's passive. Amen. So then, after understanding this definition, my heart was, what could be those things that make us as young people? And everyone else who's here, what could be causing us to be in the state of having heard so much, having encountered so much, having experienced so much, but we cannot point the fruit of our righteousness. And I just have a few points that I believe or think the Lord prays in my heart that could be causing us to have received this grace in vain. Or the things that could be causing us to be that seedling that's not connected. I believe that when we have encountered Uyesu Christ as on Dando and everyone here was speaking something is bound to change. And the apostle did say that we turn to be the believers that are righteous only for ourselves. And yet when we follow just the life of Paul and to try and bring it home when we follow the lives of the leaders that we have in front of us here, we can evidently point the fruit of what this transformation that happened to them has produced. Amen. Amen. So I'll just touch on, um, I think it's four points and then I'll be done. All right, so the first thing that I believe is causing us to slack in producing fruit, especially as a younger generation, we are people that associate confession and transparency with being weak. And that sometimes comes with the culture of independence. Because we are always groomed in this world outside. That you must be independent. You don't need anyone. And it seems like that has crippled in even to us here in the church because we tend to associate saying ouch as though I'm being weak then we cover up which then hinder us which then hinders us from being productive. As we see 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it says that therefore having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. So I'll just do, um, I just want to share uh, a quick example. A colleague of mine who is a runner. Um, so she recently did a 10 kilometer race. Ten kilometers. So she's used to doing this. Part of team vitality. Those who know, they know that team. We part get Team vitality. Yes. 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 So she was telling the story when she came back to the <laughs> office <laughs> that as she was running, it was raining on that day in Durban. <laughs> and at eight kilometers, <laughs> then she felt something in her ankle. <laughs> 
but she thought it's probably nothing. And then she continued on and she felt the pain even further as she was continuing but she still ignored it because in her mind she says she had a target to beat the time she had a thing done before then she continued running till the end finish line so she says what happened when she got to the finish line she just snapped something snapped in her ankle yeah and then she fell down wow. at the finish line and she could not even stand and some people had to come and take her and someone had to drive her and then when she came on Monday she was limping and she had a bandage I think around her ankle then when she went on to get it checked, then she realized that um, I think she had a fractured ankle. The ankle has been fractured. Amen. So I'm only sharing this story because for me, it just gives an example of how sometimes we as young people are very quick to cover up and we do not want to say at the point what exactly is happening. Then we continue in this race that we are all here in. And we find that only after a couple of years then the person just snaps and there's no coming back. Because there was a point where you felt Something, you felt something. For some of us, it may be offense. For some of us, it may be what did I share in the morning? The past life that we had that we have not allowed God to cleanse and renew us from. But if you can just have a picture of that person that we are all running this race and the aim is to finish. But the one with the fractured ankle, nobody could see my colleague. Which is what usually happens with us, that we are all here we're saying rejoice. we all here. We say all things are working for my good. But we neglect the basic God of confessing and being transparent about our lives. As we go and as we run in this race, we develop this sense of feeling, I know what I'm doing. Which speaks to relying more on ourselves and our own wisdom than relying on God. Now, Nash, my colleague, was not able to attain the goal that she had. Which is what happens with us that we sometimes find that you've been around with us for so long. But how are you not associating yourself with this vision? And even if you can say verbally, because we're quite good here, that I'm a part of this, I'm here. But the fruit, which is drawing us back to soul winning, drawing us back to having that compassion and that understanding that I'm an ambassador of Christ. Christ. It's not a matter of only when it's convenient to me, I must be an ambassador. Amen. Amen. So I believe that that's the first thing that is derailing our productivity. Amen. And then we'll go to the second one. It's unyielding to this new life or being unwilling to be slaves to righteousness. Amen. So you find it mostly with us as young people that 
We are people of convenience. We are people of reason. We want to reason. Let it make sense. People usually say, make it make sense. So that's our second challenge, I believe. That we think this journey, this walk with Christ is something that needs to make sense according to the standards of the world. When we take example only just from the apostles, the bishops, and the pastors, we learn what the heart of sacrifice is from their lives. We learn the life of it's no longer about them anymore. So I believe that the second challenge that we have as a generation is being unwilling to be slaves to what we are about here. The minute it requires me to sacrifice then I draw back the minute it requires more of my time and resources even actually that term of saying my time and my resources is wrong because amen because I think 2 Corinthians 5 the verse 15 above it says, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. So I believe this is the second thing that may cause us as young people and as a church to remain righteous only for ourselves because we are not willing to yield our lives. We are not willing to say even if it doesn't make sense I will do it Lord. Even if it may cause me to be at an inconvenience if it's for your glory I will do it Lord. Those are not terms you find in us. And yet the people in front of us they've done it. Paul's life is reflective of that. Amen. Amen. And the third point is a shifted focus where we turn to be more concerned about pleasing people than pleasing God. 2 Timothy, when Paul is talking to Timothy, he says, no one engaged in warfare and no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Amen. Amen. There's, there's somebody who once shared a story of how they came second in their primary school for maths. So they got B and then they went home and they were showing their mom and they were happy that look at me, I'm the top performer in my class. And he says when he shares the story, he expected a response that is clapping and applause from the parent. But the parent instead gave him a big beat. And he didn't understand why. And the parents said to him, my problem with you, you rejoicing because you are, you are B 
amongst people that performed CDs and others. You think you have done well. And yet, compared to the potential you have, you should have been an A. Amen. So what happens to us as believers and as young people, we become comfortable that the one next to me doesn't have a cell. The other one who's been been here for long, it doesn't come to gatherings. And then you think you've done good if you just have one cell. So this for me, I believe, is most of us are sitting on the potential God has vested in us. Because we are made comfortable by our peers. Which is not what we've been called for. Because we are called to focus and keep our focus on Jesus. And to have our standard as Him. And the benchmark that we want to follow. If we could ask a person next to you now, they could say, I came to this conference with one person. And you can clap hands for them. It's a good thing. And yet their potential says they should have come here with 15 people. Amen. So that hinders, I believe, our productivity. Because we become comfortable around each other. And not say, have I done enough compared to what the Lord has expected of The second last point, which is number four, it's, it's being okay giving the bare minimum. And not yielding or giving ourselves to God's full potential in us. Amen. Amen. I think the conference, um, the Harvest Conference theme last year was talking around Luke 12:48b. And it was saying that to whom much is given, much is required. So I believe that we become very comfortable. And we become those seedlings that do not produce. Because we have adopted a state of mediocrity in terms of just the bare Amen. And you know your heart. In your heart. You know how you started serving God. And where you are now. And the question is, what has caused the derail? What has now causing you to be okay with just doing just? And then the last point is being preoccupied with self-enriching um, endeavors than being kingdom-minded or kingdom-oriented. So Matthew 6 verse 33 is a popular verse that talks about us not being worried and caught up in the cloud of worries. But it says we must seek first. But it must Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. And what you find with us is that we get busy with the things that are supposed to be added and we chase after those things and we don't have time for the core of seeking first his righteousness and his faith. And then that's where you find this gap that we young people that are not kingdom minded if I could put a person here from the and ask them where do you see yourself in five years they could tell us a long story till we get tomorrow and then if you could ask the same person that as it pertains to the kingdom 
Where do you see yourself? In 5, 10 years. What do you see the Lord doing through your life? What's the Lord impressing in your heart? So I believe these are this is, was the last one. Um, so I believe these are the things that cause us to fall under that category that Paul seems to be addressing in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1. That after we've received such a precious gift, how can we receive it and then ignore it? Which means how can it be that when you say I've been blood washed, I've been redeemed. But you are not bothered when you stay around people that are still in darkness. When all you are concerned about is I will go and reach out on a Saturday. And yet you live and you walk and you stay and you speak to so many people on a daily. So, in summary, um, all I had in my heart is that may we do a diagnostic check that yes, you've been justified. Yes, we are in pursuit of righteousness. But to what fruit and to what effect? Amen. Amen. So that's all I think I had from my side is just to check that are we a generation that will just be comfortable with being inside the walls of the church by ourselves without being concerned and without being willing to put in the work. If we check Paul's life, I think 1 Corinthians 15, 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. It says, by, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Amen. Amen. I think with those words, I will hand over to, I'm not sure who will wrap up. But my prayer or my heart's cry for us as young people is that it doesn't end at I am saved for me. But like Paul, like our leaders that have walked in front of us, we need to be willing to labor and be available for this work. Because the Lord has called us to be his ambassadors. And the urgency that we are displaying does not match what the Lord says. It's as though we think we still have time. Our level of preoccupation it says we think we still have time. But I think the Lord just said to me, we need to wake up as the other It cannot be that I am not fruitful. The energy, the time, the resources, the things we're exposed to are not for our own enrichment. But they ought to bring glory back to the Lord. And you know, I think Proverbs 3 talks a lot about relying on God and not on your own understanding. And trusting the Lord with everything that you have. For my own life and experience, walking with Jesus, one thing I've learned, 
the principles, Imikako. the value set Imikako. that Utata spoke about in the morning, that the apostle alluded to exchange. They have to change. You cannot continue on the same foundation unless you are being renovated. Because for renovations, you continue on the old foundation. You just touch up a few things. And every time they break, you have to retouch again. But with the fresh start and fresh existence, Everything is brand new. I would encourage us as young people to not be caught up in the chase of the world. I have seen for my life that that Matthew 6.33 works. Matthew 6.33 we are seven. I as uh, as was mentioned, I got saved as a young person. And I continually in every phase of my life, primary, high school, varsity work. I can say that the only thing that has sustained me through all these phases is allowing and yielding my life to the Lord continuously. Allowing my values and my principles to be transformed. Seeking to please God first and not my flesh. And not that there were no opportunities to please my flesh. And not that there were no opportunities to please my reasoning. But I chose to say it's no longer I that lives anymore. But it is Christ who lives in me. Therefore, He has to call the shots. Whether it makes sense to me and my time and convenience, but I will do it. And the Lord has sustained and carried. Amen. Wow. Wow. God is faithful. And God has spoken through his servant. You know, as young people, we have shifted our focus. You know, Paul says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has allowed you? Know that having begun in the spirit, you seek to be made perfect by the flesh. As young people, we've decided to see confession as something weak. We've decided to look for gainful things. And the kingdom of God is no longer first in our hearts. We've decided to look to the world in trying to fulfill our walk with God. And truly as a diagnostic check, I want us to take this moment to look into our hearts, to look into our lives, and truly see where do we stand with God. Because God is unable to walk with you if the justification you receive you still hinder. It is vain in your life. And truly, Jenna, I would like us just to stand. And if you are here this evening, and you're saying, Lord, I've looked away. Lord, I've lost focus. Lord, when I look at my life, 
I've fallen short yet again of your glory. This program is brought to you in partnership with the Bush Christian Campsite, located in Colbridge, about five kilometers from the East London Airport. Enjoy our outdoor gym facility with nature as your backdrop. The campsite exhibits nature's beauty and is the perfect getaway for visitors seeking peace and serenity. Enjoy our conference and intimate wedding facilities and host your life's special events. Delight in our wonderful self-catering chalets, built with absolute comfort and enjoy your home away from home. Entertain the little ones in the kiddie zones, host kiddies birthday parties and fun activities for them to enjoy all day long. Come dine with us in our dining area and relax in our swimming pool area as well. Leisure in one of many recreational areas on the site. Catch up with friends and loved ones over a cup of coffee in our coffee shop. The Bush Christian Campsite, a home away from home.